Right, as some of you may know, I've recently upgraded my vlogging kit and I've added the Sony ZV-1, its hand grip, and the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphones. So in this video, uh, I want to talk about the kit that I've bought, uh, talk about what I like and what I dislike about it on both the Sony ZV-1 and the Wireless Go 2 microphones. Now this is not an in-depth technical review, there's plenty of channels that will do that for you much better than I can. just really wanted to show you how I'm getting on with uh, the upgrade to the Sony uh, after I suppose it's nearly well, over four years of using GoPros to make my YouTube videos. But first let me show you what I bought. Okay, so you go over there. So this is the Sony ZV-1 camera and uh, it's quite a compact camera it's got one of these flip out screens so you can turn it that way so you can see what you're filming turn it back sorry turn it that way and then you can see from the other end so I can I can now see what I'm filming so the idea is obviously with a screen like that I can then talk to myself like that and that's why it's called a vlogging camera. Now it's got this hand grip here which I'm going to talk about in a little bit more detail but uh, this is adjustable so you can adjust it a bit more so I can talk like that or you can have it straight it's got a button on the side you press and you turn it and it's got a, a lock wheel there to lock it in place so then what I would normally be doing if I'm filming something, I don't know, like a motorhome, I would have the camera with the screen on the back and I would be filming a bit like that. Now on the, the hand grip, if I switch the hand grip on, it's got this lock button, I can use this to zoom it in and out. So I've got a zoom function on there. I can start the movies by pressing the red button that's me filming me filming me or I can take a picture so I can just use, use that to take a picture next time so that's why this is such a useful thing to have but it has got a very comprehensive menu feature it's hard not to talk about um, the various things on the camera but I think I probably ought to leave that to the experts I wanted to tell you how I really how I got on with this and uh, it's quite a it's quite a lot more um, to it than thank you it's quite a lot more to it than the GoPro so what did I like about the the Sony well I like the comprehensive menu feature it's got and the feature set that comes with it uh, it's got a feature called my menu feature which helps keep sort of the regularly used features in one place so you can if you want to you can uh, adjust the, the product showcase mode or you can set the exposure the things that you might do regularly what I really like about the Sony is the product review feature so it means that if I'm filming something if I'm filming something let's get it filming so if I'm filming something I'm talking to the camera like this and I want to show something to the camera it will focus on the product itself and then back on me and that's the product showcase feature I probably played about too much with the zoom feature on the camera <laughs> I know when we went to Wimpole Hall I was zooming in and out of everything and it's very easy to get carried away with the zoom feature when you've never had a zoom feature on your uh, your GoPro whenever I've done any zoom on the GoPro it's always been done in the editing it's a lot easier using the hand grip uh, to actually film and vlog and particularly if you want to take a picture it's a lot easier and I can turn this round just find the right button so I can turn this round so on the camera switch it on so on the camera I've got all the buttons to hand so if I want to take a picture just a case really of pressing the button on the hand grip. There's a button for photo, there's a button for movie and there's one for zooming. There's a 
button there for zooming. I can zoom in and out. So I record a, record a movie, zoom in, and it's got a really <laughs> too light playing with the zoom. It's got an optical zoom, which is about there. And if I go a little bit further, it's got a digital zoom. You lose a little bit of quality with the digital zoom. It's actually quite hard to hold. It's still there as well. I find that a lot easier to use than a phone because whenever I want to take a picture with a phone, I've always got a phone out of my pocket. I've got to do the old face thing or the fingerprint thing, and then you go to the app, and then you find the app, and then you you hold the phone, and it's always a bit awkward to hold the phone, and you press the button and if you've got this set up it's just a case of going and you've taken the picture so a lot easier to use on a phone and to be honest I bought the Samsung Samsung S20 um, at the beginning of the year hoping that I'd use it to take more video <sighs> try not to drop it on the floor yeah and it's quite robust <laughs> fortunately and that's one of the worries I think actually the um, it's, it does feel a bit more delicate than the GoPro and I'll come on to that a little bit later and how I might be using this. I think it would be quite dangerous to drop this on its lens obviously. Uh, falling off the sofa is probably not a good idea but at least it seems to have survived. So taking a picture with a phone always seems a bit of a faff. Taking a picture with a proper camera actually seems to be very enjoyable. So the pictures and the video on the camera seem to have a better quality than the GoPro, a better image quality, even though I'm filming the same sort of resolution 1080p 25 frames a second, it actually seems to work a lot better. I can also use this as a streaming camera with the USB lead. Now this was a feature that uh, existed with the camera, there's been a recent firmware update and it now allows it to take video and audio over the USB lead so you can use it for doing YouTube lives. I haven't actually tried that yet but I, I've hooked it up to the to the PC to the laptop and uh, it seems to work pretty well. Uh, time will tell how that goes. Always found if I tried to hook up the GoPro to the laptop and do some live stream it, it just it always seemed to go horribly wrong. The sound seemed to get out of sync with the the camera and the the feed and it put me off doing lives altogether. Um, when I've been doing the lives with Jason, those uh, those lives I've been doing Fridays, uh, I was actually just using the laptop, so just using the laptop's camera, the, you know, the built-in webcam. And although the, the quality seems okay, it could be improved if I could use this for doing the live stream itself. But we'll give that a go at a later date. Now, one thing to mention about this is it, actually it's fairly compact and I, I just want to compare it with the GoPro let's just compare it so it, it's not that dissimilar to the GoPro it's wider it's probably funnily enough it's a bit narrower in the body as it were there um, but it's certainly heavier but it's still a fairly compact camera particularly if you take it off off the hand grip and you're just using it as a camera that is that is nice and easy to hold in your hand obviously better with two hands but that's pretty good and that could still fit in a coat pocket it won't fit in my jeans pocket but still fit in a coat pocket uh, if I took the GoPro out of its cage that would probably fit in my pocket so that's the difference with the GoPro so what do I dislike about it? Well, it goes back to what I was saying. Although compact, it's still qu it's quite heavy with the with the hand grip and the camera attached. That's 500 grams. So it's half a kilogram. That's that's fairly a fairly weighty thing, which quite surprised me when it arrived. Um, the GoPro with its handle and its mic adapter is 300 kilograms. So it's 200 kilograms difference. So there is quite a weight difference between the two and that took a bit of getting used to particularly if you're you know you're talking to the camera you're holding it out there um, and you've, you've got to hold it arm's length then it starts to become a bit of an issue and which brings me on to another um, point and I think you've probably seen these on a Sony ZV, uh, ZV-1 reviews is the angle that um, 
the wide angle it's not wide enough so what I had to do was I bought another accessory for the zone for the I keep calling it the Zoni the Sony ZV-1 and that's a wide angle lens so let me show you that that's the Ulanzi WL-1 which is an add-on wide angle lens on the camera this plate at the front here is stuck on with a bit of 3M tape, so that, that's stuck on, and that's the 52mm adapter, which is for this wide angle lens here. So what you do is you take the, the back plate off, which promptly falls on the floor, and then you screw that onto here. It's got a lens cap on it and you can also put filters on the front of that as well so that would be useful and you switch it on and you turn it round so the handles facing you adjust it so it's like that that's the difference with the wide angle lens and me talking to this camera here and uh, you can see that that's I'm not my arm is fairly fairly well bent there and that's a reasonable distance so you're not got your arm outstretched let me show you what happens when I take the lens off and that's the difference with the wide angle lens off I should get my hand out of the way and that's on, off, on, off. You see it makes quite a difference. And just to slightly diverge a little bit, this wide angle lens has a bit of weight to it as well. So obviously if you've got it on this bit of lens here, there's a little bit of extra weight on that. So with, with the, this lens on, I think that adds about another 100 grams. So you're now up to nearly 600 grams with that on there. But like I say, if you're only using it, if you're only using it for doing the talky bits, and often you can be set up on a tripod and you can move it away. But if you want to be doing the walking and talking to the camera like that, then you you probably need the wide angle lens. Which is one of the disappointments, I think, of the Sony that the what they ain't that the lens is not wide enough. Let's talk about the Rode Wireless Go 2 and the lavalier mics I bought for it. Let's show you that. Right, they come in a little soft pouch, and it's basically a ton of leads in here. But that is one of the transmitters. You can have a little fluffy wind protector which sort of twists on. <laughs> it looks like it's wearing a hat doesn't it really? So that's one mic. The reason for the two is that you get two mics, so two transmitters and that can also have, sorry that's the receiver, <laughs> <laughs> two, two transmitters, that's the other transmitter and that can also have its own little hat and you can just clip those onto your shirt and then you can start recording you switch this mic on, you switch the receiver on and then obviously you'll get all the sound coming through those that's great if you just want to quickly hook yourself up and start recording let's see if I switch this one on hold it for two seconds and it comes on Hold this one for two seconds, this one, and then you can see that I'm recording. So you can use it in one person mode, one, one mic mode, or if you switch the other one on, it's on, Let's move that one out of the way and then you can see that I'm recording off mic 2 as well. Now having two mics has been brilliant for us. One of the things we struggle with when perhaps when we're driving 
is getting ourselves mic'd up. We used a lavalier mic, a, a lavalier mic that got a great big long lead which we're forever falling over. <laughs> so having a wireless mic has been brilliant and uh, it's one of the best things we've, we've bought I think. Um, it does allow us then to, to walk about independently without fear of strangling ourselves or falling over the lead or pulling the camera over or anything like that and I'm really looking forward to being able to use these perhaps when we're going around castles or or uh, reviewing motorhomes the sort of things that we do and having these. Now the great thing about this is it will clip on to the camera and I can use it with the Sony and I can use it with the GoPros as well. So what I do here is this has a little clip and you open the clip up and you just put it on the cold shoe or the hot shoe in this case of the camera it has a little red lead with it plug that into the camera untwist it these little doors on here incidentally are a little bit fiddly to get open I said that I've opened the wrong door now so that's now connected to the Sony camera Move it out of the way, switch it on and now wherever I go with this mic it's being picked up on the transmitter there and fed into the camera and that's what we've been using the last few videos just to record just to record the sound so that you can see this, this is the sound from this microphone here and that has worked really really well and obviously this is a sound from the other microphone. Now there's an app that comes with the um, these Rode microphones and I perhaps need to show you a little bit of footage of that. The app is a little bit flaky I've got to confess and you hook these microphones up with these leads provided and you plug it in into your laptop and uh, of course with the Dell laptop you only get USB C's and these are USB A's so you have to use an adapter but you plug it in and uh, you can do things right. in the app. Now there's no phone app for these so I can't adjust the, the, the level of these on the phone. I can adjust it on the PC and I can adjust it on there on the back there's a DB level meter. Now, it took me a while to actually get the right levels. I wanted to be able to just swap the mic that was on the Sony to using it on the GoPro so I had to do a bit of fiddling about and what I found is I've set the Sony to 15 the sound level to 15 and I set this to 12 that seems to be a useful useful compromise I can then transfer this onto the the Hero and the sound level seems to be roughly about the same took a bit of fiddling about, fiddling about but it does work. Like I say you need to make a lot of the adjustments with the Rode Wireless Go 2 in the app. It's not a problem because it, once, they're, once they're set up that's it you're done. The other thing is I uh, need to probably need to mention this is the battery life. These are obviously recharged and what I found is that the battery on the transmitter sorry yeah the battery on the transmitter seems to last longer than the battery on the receiver. Now it might be because they've got the same battery in them and the receiver's doing more. Obviously it's receiving two microphones and it's got a display and all that sort of thing. So just have to sort of watch that. You can be merrily recording away with, with, your, um, with your mics talking away and it's not being transmitted to the receiver. Or, or rather it is being transmitted but not being received by the receiver if you see what I mean. Uh, so you've got to be careful of that. Which brings me on to one of the great features about the little Rode microphones is that they record independently. So it's actually recording onto a little uh, memory card presumably in here and once you plug it into the PC you can then access that recording independently. Now I found when we were uh, where was it we were going? We were driving through Bulldog and I was, I was filming away, chatting away to the thing. And I'd actually forgotten to switch the, the receiver on, so, you know, hands up, that was my fault. Uh, and I thought, when I got the video, I thought, oh no, I've done it again, no sound. 
but I'd remembered that these had recorded the sound. So you can hook up these and then you can download the sound and then you can put that back in your video. So it was a bit of a lifesaver and I uh, wish I'd had that many, many times. And uh, it would have saved a lot of sort of heartache or putting a load of uh, dodgy music onto videos to cover up the fact that I forgot to switch the mics on. Yeah, one of the really good things about these microphones is that when you plug them into a PC you can recover the recordings that are made on this microphone. So if I just plug this one in. And you go into Road Central. You can go into Recording. And the bit that's got no audio, that was just there was no audio there basically, is the tricky bit is lining it up. So there was a bit where a fire engine came along I used the siren of the fire engine as it went past to line it up because you've got no clapperboard or anything. Enough of our viewers. It's cold, Bulldog. Oh, oh, fire engine here. There's a great new fire engine coming. So we'll just stop here. And you've got the two tracks, you've got the one transmitter and the other transmitter, so that's mine and Jenny's mics. Obviously the, re the receiver wasn't receiving anything, that's why I got no sound, basically because they haven't charged the battery up. But that really can get you out of a, a little sticky patch there. So I've got some audio there, I mean it's not the most exciting bit of video ever, but it just sort of proves what you can do with it. The other thing I'd mention is it's sometimes a little bit strange when you've got two mics. If Jenny's wandered off up the hill and she's still talking, she might be talking to Poppy or to Tara, and uh, the mic's obviously still on, and it's, we're still receiving the sound, and I'm busy chatting away to the camera. You don't, you're not aware that Jenny might still be talking. I think I've got a bit of footage here of what happens. Yeah, it's another big event that year. Mrs. W. H. Darling of Grey's supported the Hertfordshire yeah. Society and yes. the Naturalist Trust <laughs> for the benefit of all who no, cherish this one. landscape. Yeah, so uh, the final thing we decided to buy for our upgrade were the lavalier mics, which seems a bit strange. You buy wireless microphones and now you buy a wired mic. Now, the reason for this is that you can shove it down your t-shirt and you t tiny little things these are you can connect these up just up to there and this this end take the little hat off and you can plug it in to the wireless microphones now I can now put that in the pocket tuck my t-shirt in the spare bit of wire in there somewhere and then I can walk about and it's still recording the sound and it's less it's less visible I think than than these now I, I did worry when I connected these up that they would actually fall off and uh, you'd lose them with it's with the microphone safely tucked in your pocket and this little lavalier mic on there you can basically walk around and you forget you're wearing the mic as long as the batteries are okay, you're still recording sound. So I'm talking away here and the, the level's obviously still going, so I can be filming and I'm complete, I am effectively completely wireless there, but I'm getting a good sound. I'm getting a good sound coming through on the camera. So overall, um, what I'm gonna to continue to do is I'm gonna carry on using the GoPro Hero 7 for the driving footage and I will be using the I'll be using the wireless microphone on the GoPro Hero 7 and this setup here with the lavalier mic and the mics in our pocket for doing the driving long footage. It means we can leave the mics on and they, the batteries last for about about four to five hours I think so you can basically leave them on and all you need to do then is switch the camera on and record the footage. Uh, that's a great improvement. I'm going to use the Hero 8, this one, 
still with its microphone adapter and the Ulanzi cage and still with the little editage microphone and fluffy hat for when I'm out and about perhaps perhaps the weather's not so good uh, if we're walking along because the, the stabilization on the GoPro Hero 8 is so much better than the walking along footage of the, of the, the Sony ZV-1 so that be using this for sort of general point of view footage I'll be using the Sony for doing this sort of talking, talking heads footage really for streaming, for taking photos, uh, for outside scenery and obviously I've got the zoom lens as well so I can get a bit closer in on things that are further away which I can't do with the GoPro apart from walking to the whatever I'm filming and I'll probably use this when I'm filming motorhomes perhaps at the NEC as well and we'll see how we get on. I think it's worth mentioning, I think the sound quality in particular these Rode Wireless Go 2 microphones is really good. At the moment I'm recording using the Rode um, Video Micro Plus or whatever it's called uh, but coming out of the, the what, using the Wireless Go microphone this has been really good. It's quite a revelation, the sound. And the other thing I, I ought to mention is I think the quality of the videos that I've made using the Sony, apart from the handheld bit, which I've struggled with a, uh, a little bit, trying to keep it steady, but I think the actual video quality has been really, really good. And I'm quite impressed with it. And it might encourage me to do some 4K videos with it, but at the moment I haven't really got the editing software that can cope with a 4K video. So maybe the next step would be upgrading the uh, software uh, uh, for doing my editing. But don't tell Jenny I said that. Oh, and the other thing is, <laughs> I keep forgetting, I keep, keep forgetting to mention this. One of the great things about this uh, setup, the Wireless Go setup, is you can actually use one of the USB leads and you can connect this directly into the laptop so it means that if you're doing any filming uh, that involves recording with the laptop the sound goes into the wireless uh, wireless go to microphone and then directly into the laptop so it saves having to do a separate recording and then put it onto the laptop so it cuts out a really good step so I am very impressed with these wireless go microphones so I hope you found this useful and if you did give us a thumbs up, if you haven't already please subscribe and hit the notifications icon and you'll get an update when I next do a talking head video.